So ladies and gentlemen, this is a third episode of React Redux series. In the first tutorial, we looked at what Redux is and its fundamentals. And the second one, we built a simple application with Redux only without using React. So now it's time to use Redux and React together. And if you haven't followed those uh, videos, you can do it. I'll provide a link here. And welcome to Taxi Tutorials. guys so uh, in order to understand how we can integrate Redux with React we need to understand how to replace the current or the local state with the global uh, state which is available in, in, the, in the Redux store now we're gonna have a, a number which is age and we can we can increase it and decrease it. we'll have two buttons and then so we'll have a local state state first and then we can replace that functionality with the Redux uh, store and I think it is very important to, to do that way because if you start doing it, you don't know why we are using uh, Redux. Uh, this way you know that you had a local state first and what part is being replaced. And this would have like say called age. And inside I can have a um, span where are my age is going to live. And then I have two buttons. This button I'm gonna call age up. And the second button, I'm going to say H down. All right, now let's run this. All right, so we have a page where we have H and then two buttons. Right now it's not doing anything and not supposed to because we haven't actually built any functionality because we haven't built any functionality yet. So let's do that. Um, we're going to need uh, the local state, which will eventually replace with the Redux store state. So this would, should be simple, right? State equal to uh, age one variable and the default value should be 21 because we want our person to be really nice and youthful, all right? And then um, if I, I can replace this here, this dot state dot age and if I run it again, I should see the, the age uh, that is bound here. Now let's write the functionality to increase the age and increase, decrease the age. So we need two handles. We can say on age up, which is nothing but an arrow function. And what it does, it actually takes a current state and age and just increase it by one. So age up uh, really means just increase the age by one, right? So we can simply use, uh, use a set, set state. So we can say this dot set state uh, this is provided by Re react where you can take the current state um, create a copy and mutate it and return uh, and then set it but instead we can do everything in one line for now so to create a copy we can do this dot state and then we can add one to the age by doing this state dot h and there are multiple ways to do this but we're going to use a simple way all right uh, now we need to still um, use this function inside the button so button have on click event and we can simply use this dot on h up right now let's see how it works all right so now if i click on the age up the age goes up the age down still doesn't do anything. We can change that. All I have to do is copy the same function and uh, instead of age up, I'm just gonna call it age down. And instead of plus plus, I need minus minus. And also I would need an, another on click event. This dot on age down. Now, if I do age up, it goes up, age down, that goes down. So they both work. Now let's replace this with three ducks. So how do we do that? So first we need two packages. Uh, we need Redux and we need React Redux. So we in a previous tutorial, we only used Redux, right? 
Uh, there is a special package called React Redux uh, that would allow us to work React with Redux. So first one you can do npm install uh, Redux dash dash save and the second one npm install react dash redux dash dash save so after they installed i can see that they are installed here react redux and redux so now i have those two packages ready now it's time to build our functionality uh, usually the first thing i would do is i need to build a store and for creating the store i would need two things i need state and reducers and reducers are nothing but you know this functionality here uh, with the initial state. So I usually like to build that first, even if it's a simple reducer. So I'm gonna create a folder called store and inside I'm gonna have a file called reducer.js. Again, if I look at here, I have a local state, which I wanna replace it by uh, the, the, the store state, right? So let's create the initial state so const uh, initial state equal to, and it's the same one, age, and we can have a default value, which is 21. Now let's create a reducer. So again, it's a function, reducer equal to, it's an arrow function, and it takes two arguments. Um, first is state, and the second is action. So the way it works is if you don't have first time when you when it runs it doesn't have a state then it needs to set to the initial state the es6 version of javascript provided us the default parameters and the way it works is if you in the argument if you say equal to whatever um, that's set as a default parameter which means if the state is not provided it will use that initial state for the first time and then once the state is um, set then it would use that uh, the, the, that state okay so this only runs once and inside we're gonna take the state and based on the action we need to change the state and then return it so basically it does the same thing that we do here where we create a copy of the state modified based on the here we are modifying based on the, the event and then we're returning it right uh, but we are doing a set state here, but we're not going to do set state here. Instead, first let's create a copy. So we can say uh, new state equal to, and create a copy. We're going to use spread operator. And then simply return new state. All right. Uh, we're gonna write the functionality later on and then we need to export the reducer so we can use it in other uh, modules export default reducer okay so now we have reducer that we can use remember the 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 store it has to be global so uh, we need to plug in the store it has to be done at the at the, at the highest level and the highest level here right now is index.js, uh, where you're re rendering the, the app component, which is the highest level component. So uh, we need to import a couple of modules, one from React Redux. So import uh, from, first one is from React Redux. And this package is called provider, okay? Uh, provider would allow us to inject the global store and so we're going to wrap the entire app with provider so whatever we pass to it is available globally the second thing we need to do is import we need to build a store now so we can say uh, create store from Redux okay so this will allow us to create the store uh, also we need to import the reducers that we just created uh, default 
we can write it like this and it's available inside the store and reducer all right now let's create our store now store is created using reducer so we can say const store equal to um, create store and we're just going to pass the reducer to it all right so we have our store ready with the reducer now we need to pass the store I know it's a lot of work but once you start it this is a one-time thing okay so you need to you need to remember this stuff so you need to pass the store as a property to the provider so we can say store equal to uh, store all right so now the store is available to the entire application all right so now what we need to do inside the app actually so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to comment out the entire state and all that age up and everything. So we are no longer using the local state. Instead, we're going to use the uh, the store uh, to maintain the state, right? So we need to plug in the store here. So there's a one thing we need to do, and we need to do this for every single container. So every single page, if you want to access the store, uh, we need to map it, uh, our props with it. So how do we do this? Remember, we need to be able to subscribe to the store. So any changes that happens in the store automatically should be coming to this component. And also the second thing, we need to be able to dispatch actions from uh, every container. A container is nothing but a top level uh, component, which is basically a page, right? And why do we need these two objects? So inside a component, everything uh, you can access the state or props. Now, we're not going to use a local state, so that's out of the picture. The only thing left is props. So we need to map our props to store and uh, actions. So we need two variables. For dispatch to props. And it's nothing but a function. And it takes dispatch as an argument and it returns the mapped object. So it will have two events. So this two um, handle, we need to set as a property here. So the first one, and I'm just gonna write an anonymous function, which simply dispatches and dispatches an action. And this action type would be H up and the second property is going to be on h down which is dispatch type h down okay so pretty simple now we haven't really defined its types this is supposed to be defined inside the reducer so We'll do it in a minute. Uh, the second thing we need to do is whenever uh, the state is changed, we need to be able to subscribe it. And instead of just subscribe, here we're gonna map it to our prop. So it's automatically available to us. So that's our second one, map state to props. And it's the same way, uh, but instead of dispatch, here we have state which returns age and this would be state dot age now how do we really connect this to our store so we need to import something called connect so it's an import connect from you guessed it right it should be react redux package because remember the React Redux package is the one who actually allows you to connect React to Redux. So it's supposed to be coming from there. And the way we connect it is we use this connect and we pass this two argument. The first argument is going to be the map state to props. And the second is going to be map dispatch to props. All right. And when, you, when I run this, this would give me one higher level component and what higher level component is it basically takes a component as an argument 
and set few things and it returns another component. And then I can pass our app component which will return a component. If you don't know what a higher level component is, I have a tutorial on it. I'll provide a link here. All right, so we are almost there. We still need to uh, hook up this age up and age down in the reducer. So we need this functionality inside the reducer. So when reducer receives an action, it could be either age up or age down. So here we can say if action dot type remember we are passing here as type right so it says if action dot type equal to um, let's say if it's age up then we need to do something uh, with the new state which 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 we actually copied from the original so all we need to do is just new state dot age uh, plus plus that's all we need to do. If it's age down, then we simply reduce it. And in the end, we are returning the, the new state back anyway, right? So this will pretty much replaces this functionality. So we don't need this anymore. So I'm just going to remove it. When I click on this button, age up, um, before it used to have a method call on age up, which no longer exists. Now we have a property which call it on age up. So I have to replace it with this dot props dot on age up. Same thing with the on age down. What about the age? Remember, we don't we no longer have a, a local state, so we have to replace this. This also is a prop, so everything is coming from props because they're mapped to the props, right? All right. So that should be it. And I have written a lot of code. I hope I haven't made any mistakes. So let's run this. NPM start. All right, so now if I click on up, it increases. If I click down, it decreases. So everything worked as a plan in a one shot, which I'm surprised. Usually I make few spelling mistakes, but everything works fine. Uh, one more thing is instead of using this if statements, you can actually replace it with a switch statement. I usually like if statement better than switch, but it's up to your preference. So you can. So this was an example with a sim. This was a simple example with a simple state. So in the next tutorial of the series, we're gonna take a, a little complex state, um, like an object, and how do how it works in that scenario. And if you want to follow the entire. Uh, React Redux tutorial series, I will provide a link here so you can watch those tutorials. And I hope you learned something from this tutorial. And if you did, please like, subscribe, and provide a um, constructive comment. And you can also help the channel via Patreon. Also follow me on the Twitter and the Facebook. And I have a new thing. Uh, I'm creating um, some merchandise on a Teespring. And if it's available in your country, uh, feel free to purchase it if you like it. Uh, it could be a great gift for somebody. Uh, I'll provide a link here. And you can also trans, uh, translate this video for me, uh, provide the information in the uh, description. And thank you.